Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the right time, a Wave Sports and Entertainment original presented by Prize Picks. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for listening wherever you get your podcast. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Rate us, review us, give us five stars. You only give us four stars. I'm inclined to believe you are a hater. Subscribe and like too. I think I said that. I don't know if I did. It is Foxworth Friday. Dominic Foxworth, what's going on? Nothing. Happy to be in Vegas. <laughs> the, the energy is good in this room. It is good in this city. And it is good with you, my man, yo, Bomani yo, Jones. Yo, it's like we got two things that are very interesting going on here. Number one, this is like the second time that we've ever done an episode in yeah. the same room the first time we've done it in the same room without a live audience so like i guess this is a momentous occasion of sorts another thing that happened is the other day i did the show from my house in a t-shirt somebody pointed out and they are correct that i never do a show in a t-shirt i always got a hood on of some sort which is entirely um you know looking out for me and my physique but you know (laughs) since your boy been you know yeah. pushing them up a little bit i decided to go a little harder let y'all let y'all see what was going on here you know what i'm saying nothing wrong with showing off a little bit you earned yeah. it let them see it. i'll be honest with you it was a little bit less showing off than it is okay i think i've moved like more into the confidence interval of human bodies <laughs> right like like i moved into the space where this is not necessarily going to be something that makes somebody say nothing about what is going on right like yeah. i want to i gotta keep the fo- i i gotta keep the main thing the main right. thing right I feel, yeah you moved but, into to the into the center yeah, of the standard look deviation. Closer, yeah. Look closer, like look it. closer, right? But the other thing that I think is very interesting is I'm not wearing this hoodie as we speak because I'm worried about what y'all think about me. I'm wearing this hoodie because it's 45 degrees outside. That's warmer than it's been, honestly. Dog, that yeah. we I not gonna lie. I ain't have to come do this. You know what I'm saying? I could see lots of ways that it would be beneficial to the show and, of course, to the company. I could see all those things. But if I was staying at home, it wouldn't have been such a big thing. But I'm in New York. It's Las Vegas. I figured I could get a little reprieve from some New York. No, that's not what happened at all, dog. When we got here on when I, when I got here on Tuesday, it was like a bunch of rain, and I guess the rain from the West Coast had moved over. And it was funny. This city... It's not prepared for rain nope. in any way. Nope. Like they had to shut off lanes of the street coming in <laughs> because it was too much rain. Yes. I saw a lady outside with a broom sweeping rain. <laughs> like it's it's outrageous. I guess is if we got a hundred and twenty degree yes. heat on the East Coast, which I guess it can get up to pretty hot out here sometimes, maybe we would respond the same way yes, and they would laugh exactly at us. It. But right now, y'all was not ready for this rain. No. They shut down all the little like escalators that are outside and stuff. Just Everything shut I got down. news for you, dog. This place has got its charms. Don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah. But if it rained here a lot, wouldn't nobody live here? That's fair. You know what <laughs> I'm saying? It's like when you're in Miami and it's a gr- it's like a cloudy gray day outside. Mm-hmm. What's the fucking point of this? <laughs> well, this is different, though, because... You can you can spend a week in Las Vegas and never see the sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's as a visitor. Yeah, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. You talk about living as yeah, a yeah. local. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. It's like as as Riley and Durham got bigger and bigger, and they started getting traffic. I was like, hey, 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 hey. This place has got a lot of charms to it. It's got a lot that I like about it. But I damn sure don't. It ain't enough going on here to justify a traffic jam. <laughs> what are you yeah. talking about? <laughs> it's like they they were doing a little too much. They thought that they had enough leeway. You think you are good enough? A significant. Yeah other that you can get away with some things yeah. you can't you don't make enough money yeah you don't look good enough to get away with this traffic rally durham you can't provide me nothing that i gotta put up with <laughs> you know what i'm saying you can give me a lot of stuff yeah. to appreciate some things i might wish were right. better but not such a big deal but if i gotta put up with it you better have some michelin star restaurants <laughs> if i gotta sit in traffic you yes. gotta have at least four or five stars in yes. your city if i gotta sit in traffic you need some shows i need people to come check you out i got a uh, who, somebody reached out to me to tell me that, that Mobile was mad at me because I guess last week I said Oh, that, they told you? Yeah. Nobody hit me up? Oh, yeah. Last week I said that if I was Jerry Jones, I wouldn't be in Mobile. Yes. I stand by it. Double down on that. It, no disrespect to Mobile. I'm sure it's a fine place. However, if you can go anywhere and you're not from Mobile... I ain't nobody going to Mobile. And I'm from Baltimore. Nobody tried to go in there either. I didn't mean it as a judgment. I don't live there. I grew up there. And I you live 45 minutes away. You're damn right. <laughs> and I love Baltimore in all of its charms. However, I mean, if I could choose to be in a like a legit major city, I would prefer to be. I'm going to tell you this. You say that about Mobile. 
We ain't about to say it about no Montgomery. <laughs> no sir, Bob. We all learn. My Montgomery, yeah. body, body. Yeah. You, 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 I feel safe there. Is a you get off the plane if you can't. <laughs> you, you okay see let me be careful let me be careful Montgomery I'll be honest I'm assuming you have an airport because you a state capital but I really don't know like I don't want to be presumptuous but I'm assuming that you got no air your airplane either way it goes Dominique show up it's gonna be like Eddie Murphy Raw talk about showing up in San Francisco somebody gonna throw that hat up and they gonna let him know yeah I don't want no problems with nobody I'm past the age where scuffling is ever necessary I hope yeah I guess there there could be some things that people could do but I'm trying to talk my way out of all beefs at this point hey What's the most interesting thing, by the way, live from Las Vegas that you have seen since we got here? Most interesting. See, that's the thing is Las Vegas is like New York in that you don't even remember the wild things. Like there was, I remember I would walk to work when I lived in New York and there was a guy doing pull-ups with a watermelon on his head and no shirt on at 6.30 in the morning yelling Bible references. And I never told my wife about it because it's New York. But if I saw that once in D.C., I'd have called all my friends and be like, yo, guess what's happening right now on 17th Street? It's a dude doing pull-ups with a watermelon on his head. And that's how I feel about being in Vegas is I can't even remember all the ridiculous things that I've seen just because it's like... It's like seeing a tree. I want to tell this story. It's not about Las Vegas. It's not about New York. It's about Memphis, right? Because it's in line with what you're discussing. But different cities have different thresholds for different things that elicit the reaction that we're talking about. Because I really don't know what it takes to make you stop what you're doing in New York. Right? Like, you might remember it. You might mention it to somebody. But for you to, like, stop and be like, yo. The last time I was in New York, I went to get a late night slice of pizza. There was a man standing there with his pants all the way down. It's like 20 degrees. He had a heavy coat on, pants all the way down, all his business out. I only remember it because it was the last time I went there. <laughs> <laughs> the time before that, I'm sure something just as ridiculous happened. I was having an argument with a woman once on the street in New York and back and forth. It was kind of getting somewhere. and She's like, people are looking at you like you're crazy. And I was like, no, they're not. <laughs> like, not never mind the fact that I don't think that I was going that far in the yeah. first place. Like, maybe yeah. I was wrong, right? Yeah. I will entertain that possibility. Yeah. That's about self-awareness. But I also got New York awareness. They ain't looking at me like, shit, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, they, in New York, you blend in. You can get away with just about anything. It's definitely just people peeing in the middle of the day. Just, just walk up and pee between cars and just don't care. It is at once the most public and private yeah. place in the world. Everybody can see you. Nobody's looking. <laughs> I mean, if you're looking, then you just got there. Even, <laughs> as, even the tourists, after a few hours, they get tired of it. I think you you recognize that somebody's a tourist if they stop and look at the weird right. stuff. So, like, think about this for a second, right? I don't know how much, like, riding the metro you do in D.C., but, like, how many, what do they call them now? Unhoused. unhoused. There we go. Yeah. How many unhoused people do you see just, like, sleeping on the subway? Yeah, so I don't do much of the metro, but yeah, you'll see a couple people okay. downtown. Because I've never seen an unhoused. I don't mean in the station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean on, on the train. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. That's... I mean on the train. Dude, that's such an everyday occurrence in New York. And the only reason it can work is that the rest of us have just decided, okay, we can't sit over there. <laughs> that's your, I mean, that's your little apartment. Yep, yep. That's like, he's got that. He sleep there because yeah. it's going to take a lot more than that. For us to stop, we'll be motherfuckers break dancing on the poles on the train when it's showtime. It's going to take a lot more than that. Yep. Every week when I take the train up from uh, D.C., there is a, a a platform. And so they got the morning hand, like the newer station. Of course, I go to that side because I ain't trying to go through Penn Ooh, Station. No, that's, the, that's the single worst place in yeah. Manhattan. I if, would just throw that if out. If I can avoid Penn Station, I will. And there's always like a little deck and people are practicing. There's like a dance practice. Are you serious? Every night. And like professional dancers. Like they're really talented dancers. But they have decided that they are going to unofficially rent this space right here just be working on ballet and stuff doing all types of impressive incredible dances i believe that they must be going somewhere they the show, else to perform they, they the showtime no they gotta be they gotta be the showtime people no right? they're not trying to make money they're doing a dance practice for a performance at some no, other no, bigger no, events no, no. i'm venue. talking about oh i forgot you don't live in new york the show showtime is when the cats jump on the a train because they know it ain't no stops till 125th no i know they, what you're saying they're not them no i'm telling you that these people 
they perform in some real theater somewhere. Oh, got you. But they have decided, and to the point where the people, the unhoused people decide that this last train car belongs to me, they're like, this is our practice facility. So we all come up to get off, and then we go around them, and the police stand there, they don't care. It's just New York is a place where you're like, nah, we understand. You need a place to practice, yeah, right here. The other that. people that ain't got time to be sweating all this little stuff is the police. Oh. They yeah. never, dog, do you realize they'd have robbed Wall Street by now if, <laughs> if if New York police was actually, that's why that stop and frisk shit was so offensive. Yeah. Like, like there's somebody out here with his meat out and you ain't, you, you ain't stopping and frisking him. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> that is, that is true. If you need like probable cause to stop and frisk somebody, you have seen, and I'm just a regular dude. That's all I'm saying. You have seen 30 people who have given yeah. you probable cause before you came to me. That's all I'm saying. But about Memphis. My brother lived in Memphis for a little while. And if you know me, I have an affection for Memphis, right? I like Memphis. On another day, we'll tell the story about the time that my daddy tricked my brother into moving to Memphis because my daddy believed that that job that would get my brother out of the house was more important than anything else. And he hit him with the all-time classic line. Hey, you know, <laughs> I've been to Memphis several times, you know. Reminds me a lot of Atlanta. And when he tries to when he tries to like rationalize that when my brother called him on it after finding out that that was not true, he's like, I mean, it's that part over there by the river. What river in Atlanta, Daddy? What river in Atlanta? But anyway, my brother says he's somewhere once he's in line. Mama, Mama might not have told you the story, so just brace yourself. He's in line, and you know, they be pimping in some cities, like they be pimping in Oakland, they be pimping in Memphis, like we're just. The cats, they be pimping. They just be around, right? Chicago, they be pimping. Detroit, you can't tell who pimping. Everybody, they, you know, dress like pimps, just kind of what it is, right? <laughs> so anyway. They got a pimp aesthetic. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. It's, there, there, it's, it's a broad <laughs> influence. Uh -huh. So there seemed to be some dispute between a man who appeared to be a pimp and a woman who appeared to be a prostitute, and they're having some back and forth. And as my brother tells the story, Buddy dropped the line on her, that uh, has also been used on a Digital Underground song called Good Thing We're Rapping. And the line was, what? Big dick shouldn't scare you. You've been a hoe for too long. <laughs> Which, of course, struck my brother as a rather absurd thing to have happened. But in Memphis, <laughs> just another day at the office, man. Ain't nobody turn around. Ain't nobody look. He's the only person. In fact, he might have gotten himself into trouble for reckless eyeballing. He, he, is, the, he is the only person out there who... The, the culture of a place, um, it's like if you don't get to travel a bunch of different places and there are cities that you don't get to go to, like Memphis is a city I've never been to. Um, I had no reason to go there. My team's never played in Memphis because I play football. Yes. Um, but you get a taste of the culture from the music that comes out of there. And just the concept of naming your group 3-6 Mafia struck me as odd. Oh, and then you listen well, to the it lyrics. Was, it was triple six yeah, first. Right, right, right. It was very, that struck me as odd because we black. <laughs> we don't mess with that. <laughs> what y'all doing down there? And then you listen to the lyrics in a lot of the you the beats be knocking, so you don't hear the lyrics. Go back and listen to some of them damn songs. And you're like, wow, this place Hold on. is unusual. This is what you need, right? So you know, Megan Thee Stallion and Nicki Minaj had their little back and forth. And Nicki Minaj put out that quick little line where she say, where well, she's six foot, called a big foot. Something, something, something. I tell her, get on the good foot. And I laughed. <laughs> I'm not going to pretend like I didn't laugh. I laughed with push your ass how long 40 had left. Tick, oh. tick, tick. That boy's so sick, sick, sick. I laughed. And the reason that I have no problem saying I laughed, me and my man Bobo would talk about this. We're from a different generation. Yeah. And like, have you ever like seen DJ Paul in person? Yeah. Okay. You know, DJ Paul mm -hmm. has a situation with his arm. Mm -hmm. I'm not making fun of the arm situation. However, I believe it was Kingpin Skinny Pimp who did make fun of the arm situation in the song that was called Do the Lit Arm Dance. Now, you're like, what do you mean lit? I mean, lit like little. It's like do the little arm oh, dance. Like, do the, and, and by the way, the hook on do the lit arm dance <laughs> betrays what an absurd thing this is that you are saying. The cruelty, like it's oh, not said gosh. as though I'm really going below the belt here. Yeah. No, 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 it's just saying like any other hook. 
Yeah, I feel like said. I feel like uh, diss tracks fall into a special category life. of like of like MMA, where we watch football <laughs> and it's like, oh my gosh, what a gruesome concussion! Protect those poor babies. Then we watch MMA, it's like, oh, yep. oh he kicked them to sleep. Yeah, that, I feel like that's what I was, that was exactly what I was about to say. <laughs> like a dude get knocked out in a football game, we have in a prayer circle. They going out quietly. Manny Pacquiao get knocked out. We putting Simba on him. We had Simba <laughs> try. Remember that, bro? We had. Simba Someone try to wake him up. We're like, yo, you decided you was going to do this. I feel like diss tracks fall into that same category. Yes. Where it's, it's okay to laugh because yes. that is the whole point. No one's getting harmed in this process. But yeah. yeah. But I say all that to say, Memphis get down a little bit differently. Like, like if, again, these other things we talking about were just lines. <laughs> but but when I heard Nicki Minaj say that, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm from a different time. There's, get on a, the good there's, a, there's, a, there's a cruelty that comes from the diss record. That, oh, gosh. I mean. Hit him up. Yeah, hit him up. Yeah. The first line. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. how do you, how, we're coming in hot. hot. We're coming in on fire. Oh, then and then end the song by just random sprays of anybody who has ever been close to the city of New York. Yo, <laughs> Everybody can get my it. My favorite thing when you just feel like somebody got brought up for no reason is Cheeto XL. <laughs> fuck you too. What? <laughs> And I I can't remember what Cheeto XL did to earn his way into this. Nothing. Because I'm sure nothing that deserved it. It's just like he was he just had a, a list and then he got to the end. It's like, oh, before we get out of here, bah, 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 bah. The other thing about it is, and I imagine you remember Cheeto XL. I would not want to get into a rap battle with Cheeto XL. I don't feel like there's a lot of winning in rap battles with Cheeto XL, except for the fact the kind of battle that Tupac is trying to have. Cheeto XL can't win that. Cheeto XL will come with the most fat, the bars upon bars upon bars. Tupac just be like, Fuck you. Yeah, yeah. I, and I think that's the way to win. Uh, so, like, the, the Lyrical Miracle guys are not the best battle rappers because you do. I think you win a battle rap with the obvious setup and punchlines that everybody can get that is just straight-up disrespectful. The shit that I got to think about for a week. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. Hey, right. I ain't gonna You're land. not really getting that. Like, Cannabis was the Lyrical Ooh, Miracle who did a great diss record. I, I loved Cannabis, man. Yeah, well, I loved him until I actually pressed play on that whole tape. I'm sorry. The tape was bad, but the mixtape the cannabis? Mixtape, the mixtape, oh. mixtape cannabis was incredible. Oh, my God. The I thought second, round, second round knockout was incredible. Huh. And then LL Cool J. I still don't think LL's answer was that good. Don't matter. Career over. Yeah. Nobody. I can't think of anybody that went from here to here faster. And then years later, I lie to you not. I lie to you not. Cannabis was trying to holler at my home girl and gave her a puppy. Like a dog? A puppy. <laughs> A puppy. How'd you, like, how'd, you, how'd you like a little responsibility, baby? Right? <laughs> he gave him a puppy. He gave him a puppy. So he wasn't already with her? He was no, trying to... No, no, so no, that's the... That, that, was, that, was, that was the entry. Oh, gosh. Cannabis. That, that was the way to get it. Was, I, Cannabis also had a song about coming out the womb. Oh, oh my gosh. He needed an editor. He, <laughs> he needed more than an editor. He, he, he needed, like... Yeah. Can that, we just pretend that mixtape cannabis was the only one that ever existed? Because mix, mixtape cannabis was so good. He also said that he and Cobbett were your worst nightmare, nightmare squared. That's double for those of you who aren't mathematically aware. And the nerve, like if you just said it was double, yeah. I might have just been like, hey, we all make mistakes. But you tried to be patronizing about it. Yeah, I did. That was unfortunate. Hold on. It's double to those of you who aren't mathematically aware, which is to say they don't know no better. <laughs> I mean, it could be double if it's only twos. And zero. And yeah, one. And zero. There we go. Zero, one, and two. But anything else? Sorry, buddy. No, no, not one. Can't one, be one. Yeah, yeah. It, it would be, be double. It would yeah. be zero. See, here I go. Here I go. <laughs> it's right? only two because it's double. Two times two is yeah, four. Two times two is four. Is... Zero times zero is zero. zero but it's not double. Zero plus zero is zero. Two times zero is zero. Double okay. zero is zero. Okay. Yeah, I'm yeah. with you. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Just go on for more millennials than Mazda got in their car lot. Yes, yes. <laughs> I used to love cannabis, man. Yes. By the way, Him we never got around. I was, I, I saw something in Vegas. All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm up in the air right now, Dominique. I need mm -hmm. to know your opinion on this. Oh, you up in the air? Here's what I mean. Like in a, I mean, like a flight. No. Okay. All right. <laughs> I thought you were going for the other, other <laughs> up in the air, which you know. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, have you ever seen that clip? Well, I don't want to talk about it now because I'd be telling it myself, but. Damn, what was I going to say? Uh, something about being okay. Oh, no, 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 no. So here's the thing. We do the play the music thing. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of members of the audience who really, really take it personally. They feel very left out. They don't understand why it is 
that we do that if we're not going to tell them. And for me, it's like, yo, I'm having a conversation with my mans. I want to continue to have the conversation with my mans, but some things we just can't tell you. And so we don't want to stop it. So we want to keep it going and keep our energy. And so you understand why we still had the laughs or whatever it is. But I understand that some of y'all, I, I get where people are coming from. They're like, I don't even understand why you do it. We feel left out. And I got to be honest, you sound like a bunch of only kids. Sound like a bunch of selfish, self-absorbed only children, right? The fun of it is for you to guess what we might be talking about. And so... I was about to say play the music, but then I was like, damn, it's some people that don't like it when we say play the music. But I'm going to be honest with you. All the people who have told me that they don't like it when we play the music ain't not once told me nothing that they did like. So play the music. Oh, uh-huh. I didn't know that. Yeah, and I got to say, I feel like I owe T.O. an apology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I ran See, into See, that's how we too. should do this, by the way. that yeah. You got to admit, now that you heard me say, I think you owe T.O. an apology, you're intrigued now. And you you can, like this. And you gave them enough information that they could formulate uh, a, <laughs> a reasonable, little bit. Yeah, a reasonable little bit. theory. Yeah, I didn't know that truth about that guy, and that's really unfortunate. It's really disappointing, so, right? Yeah, because, yeah. Yeah, they need to do more than that. <laughs> they gonna need, and I, and it, that's a, a terminology that I think a lot of us use, but we don't mean that. Well, I need I need to know more about that. You know what I'm saying? Like, just tell a one one check mm-hmm. is not. I got a residual check the other day for five dollars. Like, yeah. it's yeah. a check. It'll cash. So I had that's funny to bring it up because I had a similar conversation at a party I was at last night, and I I won't expose anybody on this one, but there was people there from Live Golf at the party, and they were like handing out cards, like making friends. And one of the people that I was with is a, somebody in. Well, I wasn't with them, but they were at the party. I had me talk to them. There's somebody in sports media. And so they, we all drink and they start to make a joke like, how much would they have to pay you to send out a tweet? This person said $10,000. That's all? That's what I said. I was like, bro, you, you, or, or bruh, sis, they, or them, whoever you are, you are in a bad place, my friend. Or you haven't thought through this enough. You had too much to drink because that's not enough for me to sell out. <laughs> my, my man Hughes said it best. If you ain't got a line, you got a price. Fair point. So a lot of people out here with prices. A lot of people out here with prices. But yeah, that was the wildest thing I saw in Las Vegas. That is pretty wild. Hey, it, it it blew my mind. It 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 yeah, it blew my the mind. The line and the price changes based on where you are in uh in your life, obviously. Yeah, yeah, but some things we some things we just not do it. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Like agree. Like and anybody that can't just say I'm not doing this thing. Yeah. Like there's some things I'm looking at you. If you just can't, like if you would, like, I agree I'm with you. I'm trying to be empathetic. Yeah, and- yeah. I, I agree with you that there's some circumstances and some places where right. it's like, I can't say anything to you about this. Like, honestly, I got, I got too much money to be judging people who have to do things right. for money, but that's not what we talking about. Yeah. That's the thing. And I, in my attempt to be as empathetic as possible is you may not have other skills, skills or other avenues yeah and to maintain things that you have put it yeah i can't do it man yeah, you, got, yeah, you gotta draw yeah, the line yeah, man you gotta draw a line somewhere you gotta draw baby. the line somewhere you gotta draw a line somewhere yeah, you uh, gotta go hit knock on denny's door and yes. see if to see if they need me to flip some yes some, some pies that's <laughs> right that's right yeah. can't be this can't be this but yo, can't do that. we gonna get back here we have an actual super bowl to talk about oh, yeah. we may talk about some football Big game is right around the corner. Prize picks is the easiest and most exciting way to turn every game changing moment into 100 times your money. With as little as four correct picks, you can turn $10 into 1,000. You just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. If Patrick Mahomes throws for more than one yard in the big game, you win on prize picks. It's really simple to play. You can make your picks and submit your entry in less than 60 seconds. And if you stick around for the end of the show, you'll get to hear some picks from our producer, Sean, that can either help you win or make you fail miserably. 
So make sure you go to prizepicks.com slash Bomani and use code Bomani for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash Bomani. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Most of us have at least one relationship in our lives that we're proud of. One where we're able to work on both ourselves and the relationship to make it what it is today. A common misconception about relationships is that they have to be easy to be right. But sometimes the best ones happen when both people put in the work to make them great. Therapy can be a place to work through the challenges you face in all of your relationships, whether with friends, work, your significant other, or anyone. Therapy helps you find your strengths and also your weaknesses so you can make the best out of any relationship in your life. It's helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. It isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Bomani today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Bomani. If you were like me and watch the playoff games with your friends who might have gotten a little too rowdy, you can agree that it can be an exhausting experience. So when it's time to start another big week, celebrate Hydration Monday with Liquid IV. Liquid IV can help you feel revived and ready to take on the new week. Liquid IV is super easy to use. Just take a pre-measured packet and pour it into a glass of water, mix it up, and enjoy. You can take it at home before you start your day or take it with you to work or the gym. Plus, with their roster of flavors, you can easily find the right flavor for you and your taste buds. Weekends off are going wild. Have a game plan for Monday with Liquid IV. Grab your Liquid IV Hydration Multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco or get 20% off your first order when you go to liquidiv.com and use code BOMANI at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code BOMANI at liquidiv.com. All right, Dominique, it's the Swifty Bowl. I feel like Taylor Swift ain't even here yet. Big star of the whole situation. That's Yeah, she's not because I know we all heard about her concert in Japan, right? So she's definitely not here yet, but she's looming over all of this. It is amazing, man. It's because we've talked about before how – Every city that the Super Bowl in becomes like a tiny Super Bowl city, except for that time when it was in New York. And it's interesting to see that obviously Taylor Swift is not bigger than the NFL, but her size combined with the novelty of having a star like this involved with it has kind of made it like a big imprint that's over all of this is like Taylor Swift's here. It's but what what makes this so weird is. Taylor Swift is huge. Yeah. I do not want to, God, I don't want to discount that because I ain't got time for this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I need y'all to hear and understand what I'm saying. But Michael Jackson, for example, for uh. example, cut across demographics. I would even make the argument like Madonna cut across demographics. Like, the base there is heavily female, but she meant something. Yeah. Like, Madonna was not siloed off right. from men in a way that if you were to, like, we're in the more si- most siloed era of all this stuff. But I would say that Taylor Swift has more fans than, call it Drake. Right. I would say that Drake has a broader swath of fans. Like, you know, like there's a whole, yeah. you, you, you see what I'm coming I from saying, here. Yeah. I mean, you can't, yeah. no, no one compares to Michael Jackson yes. because of the time period, I Correct. think. And the, right, but, and, the, right. Yeah. but I'm just trying to make a point to delineate, like what right. Taylor Swift has and what I think makes it interesting is it's additive. Yeah. Bringing the Taylor Swift fans in oh, yeah, yeah, is yeah, not yeah. like lighting up the people that are already here. So like right. when you have Michael Jackson do Super Bowl halftime, yeah. the Michael Jackson fans was probably already watching Super Bowl, the Super Bowl, and they're sticking around right. because he's doing halftime. The Taylor Swift fans are like, okay, so on fourth down, you have to kick it, right? Oh, you don't have to? That's interesting. Then why did, oh, okay. Not every Taylor Swift fan, to right. be clear. But you could tell by the way the broadcast handling it earlier or whatever, we are adding whole new people 
to this thing. That's interesting. I hadn't thought about it that way and how it's a, such a perfect uh, corporate relationship yes. too. And that it, it in the NFL is in this quest that all companies are in to make more money than they did last year all the time, except the NFL being as big and successful as it is, right. they're getting to the point where it's like, but it ain't no more money. Why don't we play a game over there? Right. Why don't we play a game over there? See if we can find some more money. And they're, are small pockets left in America where people don't care about football? Not anymore. Hey, man, let me tell you this, though. Traps Kelsey, I'm not saying that they will break up. I don't want to say this like it's a foregone conclusion. But he need to retire before they break up. Because if they break up and he is still playing in the NFL, if you think they're not about to burn this bad boy down, <laughs> you crazy. they going to put Andy Reid's mama address on the internet. Like, whatever goes bad with them, we need this to happen after the fact. I also wonder this. I feel like we find out about, like, the Taylor Swift relationship stuff in the songs from what people tell me, because yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying this to brag about right. it. It's just the truth. I've heard that Shake It Off song before. I don't know anything else about Taylor Swift's music at all. I just never got around to it. Like when she was first rising and climbing, yeah. it never dawned on me that this thing would still be going on so long that I would probably need to tap in. Yeah. And you know? it was it was country, so it wasn't for us. Yeah. Shake but it I, off goes hard, by the way. Yeah, but that, at the same time, dude, I was listening to a Waylon Jennings album yeah. this morning. Like I'm willing That's to true. I'm willing to go to the other places. I just right. never I just never got I never got over there. And I guess at some point, maybe I need to, but I just I don't know her music yeah, in either. that way. I have also completely forgotten the point that I was going to make off of that. Oh, it was about the fans, I think, about their commitment to this. Which, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Look, man, um, I could be wrong here. It seemed like Adele only make a record after it's over. Like, for all we know, the happier Adele and Rich Paul are, the longer y'all gonna have to wait for an Adele record. And honestly, I don't even know how she'd be singing them sad-ass songs while she happy in love. Like, I wouldn't think she want to go back to that place. But whatever. It seemed like with Taylor Swift, they find out the stuff about the dude she dating after she was done dating him, right? And they, they say that you catch all your little strays and all that stuff coming through the music. And I asked this for the, Taylor, for the Taylor Swift fans. I don't know this. I speak from ignorance and I tell you this. Like, does she have a a look like a, a a straight ahead I'm in love album? Yeah, I have no idea. But she's coming out with an album now because she announced at the Grammys, and this has to be a Heard straight that. ahead I'm in love album. This might be the first one. Or or we're going to learn a lot about this relationship that we didn't know. It all looks so good on the surface. It'd be, it'd be like, do you remember when? We just knew that Beyonce was doing something on HBO one night, right? <laughs> yep. We didn't know what it was. Oh, yeah. We just knew Lemonade. she was doing something on HBO. And I don't remember everything that happened, but I remember when she said, uh, was it, am I, uh, what's better, being jealous or crazy? And she was walking around fucking shit up with a baseball bat. And I was like, oh, buddy. And then I saw Jay-Z looking older than he ever had in that undershirt, oh, looking, 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 like a sack, looking like a sack of dirty socks. And they was hugging and everything else. I was like, oh, buddy, you made mistakes. <laughs> you made big mistakes. And then she, and then she made him go on tour where she was singing X Factor every single night and i know your life your wife loved lord hill so much that she flipped me to burn over it the first time we ever met but i think you know you walk in the house and x factor is playing buddy you you did it wrong <laughs> yeah um the idea that travis kelsey is taking this amount of risk for love is amazing to me <laughs> because there was no song about you know me. what i mean like there is a, a general risk that you take in going to any relationship but you're taking that risk because the upside is so great yes However, the downside normally isn't as scary as this is. <laughs> this is tough because yes. we talk about sports fans and like they're crazy. And even we recognize that as crazy as football fans are in America, we recognize that there are even wilder fans and like European soccer teams and stuff. But I don't know that there are fans that are more obsessed yeah. with something than they are with particular celebrities correct because they don't win or lose they don't change people they feel like they family and you know them forever and you grew up with them travis you better not yo you better don't yo i tell you this though he's handling this well and by the way as we are currently in a venue in a venue oh, yeah. adorned with all the kelsey brother um material it's a whole nother discussion they work at the same place that i work yeah. and let me tell you something i walked up in the studio and looked on the walls and i said he walking in and everybody laughed 
laugh because they knew it was true. I was like, I know who pays the bills around here, and it ain't your boy. I have it's, look. It's been yeah. a long time since I felt more like I don't even know if I'm Horace Grant. I was about to say <laughs> Scotty Pippen. I don't know if I'm Tony Kukoc. I might be just Steve Kerr over in the corner. I perform a specialty. I'm out here for the smart people, yeah. right? Like I don't know what it is. But they asked him. They asked him about if it was unfair that he has to answer these questions about his personal life. And he said, nah, just, you know, this is something that people are interested in and they enjoy it. So I'll go ahead and do it. Very well played, very non-football yeah. sort of answer. Like Bill Belichick would have just, I can't imagine how Bill Belichick would have handled any of it. Wow, why didn't Taylor Swift date Gronk? That would have been the best. Think about that for a second. If we got Taylor Swift and Gronk. Oh, gosh. I like this version a lot better. I don't know if I, I can know. that. Well, I also seen the stories where people are saying yeah. that Travis Kelsey, like people were going into barbershops trying to yeah. get a Travis Kelsey. And, and Travis handled that perfectly. Oh, what'd he say? Oh, uh, he said uh, this, it was ridiculous. And he even pointed out that and during Black History Month of all times, like <laughs> Travis seems to be. Yo. Yeah, but that's not gonna say what I thought was ridiculous about it. I want to know where these white boys is going asking for the Travis Kelsey. Cause I got news for you: if you go into the place you went for your last haircut, they might not know how to do it. They do know how to do it now because this is not even new for white people. I know this, but white I, people begin to fade for a they while. Ha, they have been, but so many of the white boys they get to the fades. They didn't get. They uh, didn't start getting the fades as super cuts. They got the fade with like Joe Brady. You think Joe Brady? You think Joe Brady is getting that fade at at one at uh, at at, at uh, one of them places with the the, the spiral. <laughs> you, you think he get that? I, I don't know. So you might be right, but I guess I assume that they learned because it's not a new thing. Like hip hop culture is not new. Nas had to fade in 93. It's correct. And it's <sighs> correct. I'm just saying this. If I was one of these white boys, you would want to go. You want to go to fade. Right, right. If, yeah. if you to quote the great, oh wow! I just realized the line that may have been more inappropriate than I was. <laughs> I was about to drop the red man line. Oh. If, if you go be a monkey, be a gorilla. <laughs> but yeah, I yeah, feel yeah. like <laughs> in this context, yeah. you could say it, say it. But they yeah, cannot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Suddenly, it's like Ugh, it's like that yeah. Pimp C line. Take that monkey shit off. You embarrassing us. Oh hey hey, what you mean about monkey, big dog? <laughs> yeah. The, um. This yeah. is by the way the least. ESPN version of the right time that we've had. That, <laughs> that right there, I have generally been like, yeah. it's the same show. Yeah, it's, it's all not. the stuff that I'd be willing to say. That right there is one where I would have been like, nah, we going back. Right now, not one person got a tight booty about that. Actually, I don't know. It's still some white people around yeah, here. They, they, they are. not they are. They wouldn't get upset about that they or get are. a tight booty about that. They, I think they trust you the same way that yeah. I do. But um, yeah, I guess you're right. But I mean, I feel like the when I was young and maybe even before this, the fade was popular because Nas had the fade. And now like Boosie's associated with the fade. The fade is not a new thing no. at all. No, it's not. You're right. You're right. The and white is... guys have been getting the fade too. I know. It's not new to them. I know. I just, I'm just, hey, look, I could be wrong. Okay. But if I was a white boy that wanted to fade... Yeah. Go go get like you could go to Taco Bell or you could go to Abuelas. Yeah, that's right. Fair. If fair I point. was you, I would go to Abuelas. That's fair. Okay. Point. And, and, fair and, and hey, hey, it might not be the floors might not be as clean as what you are expecting. The air conditioner might not work, but for what you're looking for. That's where you need to go. And you'll be so welcome. That's always the thing that yes. uh, white people tend, well, I can't speak for all white, but sometimes all people are probably a little nervous about going into a new environment. But black community, if you come into there, it's one of the most welcome things. Like, oh, man. What's your you, ass up in here? What you saying? And this is the truth. White folks know how we should yeah. feel about not every individual white person, obviously. White folks know how they would feel about us in our same circumstance, only to find out, nope, we love the hell out of y'all, man. <laughs> the one thing about this whole Travis Kelsey thing is I think it's been really cool is I think sometimes we forget that people are still growing and changing as their life goes on. And Travis Kelsey, I think the caricature we had of Travis Kelsey was a bit old and it's like the one who had the tv show and it's like you gotta fight for your right to party and he presents this fun guy but like the more that this taylor swift stuff comes along the um vaccine stuff like the the um saturday night live performance like he has seemed to have and i say matured but it seems like condescending but i think that i'm still maturing but he's matured into uh pretty cool version of a football player that's worth being proud of with the exception of i guess as we welcomed him in at one point, it feel like he 
is turning his back. That's what I was about to say. The yeah, character, that's the, the character I had, caricature that I had him on yeah. was a different caricature. It is the one that you described yeah. right there. He like, he's squarely in the white bike archetype. Yeah, right. He like he's squarely he's, there and got really, really big, really, really big, and not just any white woman. Yeah, the <laughs> the 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 like honestly the only famous person i could think of with that like that level of closeness to blackness to get a white earth woman was when tiger woods went and got him a woman from from from, from, from the goddamn Caucasus mountains no, <laughs> he, tiger, went got, he went and got his woman out of a stream tiger woods went to the factory <laughs> yes he did like, like, nah. i tell you this though if you go do that he did like, like, like he was just like, no, 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 no. Oh, he was, he God. was like sparing no expense or yeah. not expenses, not the way to put it, yeah. but you know what I mean? He was just right. like, no, 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 no. Give me the, what kind of ideas, the platonic ideal. <laughs> that's what they call it. Yeah. But he had some, some taste that was that's not a different all, discussion. Yeah. That's a different discussion. Yeah, yeah, People yeah. got what they like and what they love. They're not always the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it is not always easy to tell which was the like and which was the love. Oh, but, it's a, but it's a difference. It's a difference. Uh, I still work at ESPN, my body. I got you. I I got to trust you to get me away from this. Somebody. I don't know what the hell it would take to get fired at ESPN <laughs> at this point. Like, you don't have to say that. That's uh, fair. I mean, looking around, huh. I don't know what you got to do to get this, in trouble this over there. Co- this goes back to the Mobile Montgomery conversation. Yes. What certain people are providing yes. allows them to make ESPN sit in traffic. Yes. I, I don't got sit in traffic numbers nah, right now. Let me tell you what they figured out. It was a very wise decision on their part, right? They figured out that they had been letting people bully them into like doing oh, this stuff. Yeah. But in the end, the story was getting made by them punishing people. And so if there is no headline for the punishment, everybody move on. Ain't no such thing as scandal no more. Scandal. Separate the politics from it. I don't care who you like. I don't care who you vote for. I don't care what you think. It's a dude indicted that's going to run for president like he's not under indictment. Ain't no such thing as scandal no more scandal is over it's a wrap on that i can't think of what you'd have to say to get fired at that point see this is where we disagree is i still think it goes down to it comes down to is uh does montgomery or does uh raleigh durham have nice enough restaurants for me to sit in traffic fair it's like fair, there fair. is one <laughs> article about me is uh, will have a different impact than Fair. one article about someone who is bringing in millions of Fair. dollars for this company. So scandal Fair. or not scandal, Fair. is it worth a headache? Fair. 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 And Fair. I don't want to find out if I'm worth a headache or not, honestly. It's a great point. Because I don't know that I am. No, it's a great point. It's a great point. It's a great point. I'd also say in live of what we are discussing, maybe at some point, and it's not your fault. It's definitely my fault. I'm driving this train. We ain't talked to dollop of football yet. <laughs> I don't think me and Nate talked to dollop of football. Well, we talked football, but we didn't talk about this actual game. Yeah, I mean, uh, if people want football analysis, there are plenty of places to get it. We fair. can give it to them here, too, if they but, want it. But I am curious, though, because I think I said with Nate on the show, I was like, I decided that chiefs Bucks game. I ain't even think about it. It was like, I ain't picking against Patrick Mahomes. And then I saw Mike Reynolds was playing left tackle. and saw the error of my ways. And then I'll say this again. Saw the most incredible performance that I've ever seen relative to the statistics that you saw. I still can't believe that when he went matrix sideways, threw it through people. And I couldn't even be mad at Buddy for dropping it because why would he think it was possible? Did you? The crazy thing, and this is off topic a little bit, but <clears throat> Spencer Hall sent me a video of Brock Purdy doing the exact same shit in college. The pass was not nearly as accurate. I was about to say exact is a stretch. He he, he did the parallel matrix pass too, which is funny because we always talk about him as a game manager. But yeah, that game for Patrick Mahomes is like, it's like the 13 second game for Josh Allen in that we left (laughs) thinking, oh, your team may have lost, but you (laughs) You, won. You you somebody. Yeah, you the MVP of this in, in, in my book because that game is one of the most incredible things. It was multiple passes where he he just was running to the right, dropping left, hitting people in their face mask. It's like, how are you doing this? Parallel to the ground passes was crazy. He was doing everything he could. And every time he was dropping back, it was looking like that scene in the Dre Day video. But <laughs> Easy e rolled up in the spot and was like, 
And he turned right back around. Everybody was after him. It was, it was outstanding what he was doing that game. It was not impressive what they were doing at the line. They have made modifications, I think, to yes. support the tackles in this game because the tackles aren't great, and 49ers got good pass rushers. But we saw last week there's a lot of 12 personnel. I expect to see a lot of tight ends on the field, and they're going to do this little uh, methodical offense that they've been doing and. He don't throw the ball to the other team. It's the craziest part. And that's like, if you're not going to make a mistake and your defense is really good and you have the best closer in football, like you're inevitably going to keep the game close. And that's a bet I'll take is Patrick Mahomes against anybody with six minutes to go and the score tied. Dog, it's like, I think the way I put it is I saw him, like I told Nate, I was like, it's like he's, he's like controlling a game in a way you think a basketball player is controlling the game. But now that I think about it more, it was like he was controlling the game like dad in the driveway basketball. Yeah. Just back you down. Nothing you could do about it. Back you down. I can shoot the J. I can do all this other stuff. But nope, I'm just going to back you down. Back yeah. you down. And I think their talent is, is such that they are a team that could get blown out, but they're not going to get blown out because of the way that they play. Because if you think about it, the way that blowouts happen is turnovers and short drives. And he's not going to do that. Like He's going to get a couple first downs. He's going to eat up some clock. He's going to punt the ball, kick a field goal, score a touchdown. Next thing you know, the game is almost over. And you got your quarterback, and they got their best one. And if that if that is a strategy, it's a hell of a good strategy. Get to the clutch moments with the most clutch player that we have seen since Tom Brady. Well, let me ask you this, because I think this is probably the most important part of the game because Mahomes is just kind of a given, right? Yeah. Your man Spags, mm -hmm. the man who cooked Tom Brady twice in the Super Bowl yeah. on the other side against the homie Brock Purdy. That's what I'm very curious to see here, because I feel like Purdy the sort of dude that you can bait into doing foolish things. And he throws a lot of, uh, y'all trying to catch the, like, y'all he will, he is like, there's a lot of guys like this. Jay Cutler's an obvious example. Carson Palmer's another. I'm going to give you some chances to win. Yeah, you just going to have to take them. And it's a different kind than both of those guys because they had bigger arms. And Purdy doesn't have that. But the thing about Spags and that defense is they are a really intelligent defense and they're a, a versatile defense. So it's not a, ton of super like dominant talent over there but they're so smart that they can do different things in the course of the game so I'm watching the game from last week and they're doing things that I'm watching three and four times and I'm having a hard time to identify exactly what the coverage is imagine and they and they hadn't done it before so like imagine Brock Purdy in a situation or anybody in that situation or Lamar in that situation. We saw Lamar holding on to the ball forever. You know why? Because they was back there doing hybrid coverages that didn't look anything like it. And he's like, all right, the fuck is this? <laughs> and and I would be like, please just run Lamar or just throw it somewhere. But he just back there trying to figure like, it out. No, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me just, let me just figure this out. <laughs> yeah. like, I, like, like, I, I, I got to get he, to the bottom like, of this. I'm close. I got it. I got it. Give me one more second. Carl Loftus on his back. Sack fumble. It's the whole time. It's like, this is a time test, buddy. You don't get as much time as you want and I could see Brock Purdy because he's different than Lamar Brock Purdy's not going to be like that Brock Purdy's going to be like this is a time test C D B A I ain't reading these questions I'm throwing this ball and you notice that Kyle Shanahan in a lot of the games and this is one of the ways that people find to like uh, criticize Purdy is Kyle Shanahan it depends on how you use it, how you um, phrase it, but you could say that he doesn't always trust him or he's trying to protect him from himself because you can see very conservative play calls through the course of the game, which I think is probably smart for a player like you have to manage the quarterback. It's probably smart for a player like that. And eventually you might have to take it off and say, all right, do your thing. But I'm going to need you to throw some check downs to McCaffrey. If that dig ain't wide open, tuck it and run because there will be confusing coverages and there will be times where Trent McDuffie is coming from the right side of the field looking like he's blitzing to go to the deep half on the left side and you're going to think that you just got a busted coverage and he pop up and get the ball thrown into his chest. Well, let me tell you this. I can see an argument that Kyle Shanahan a little worried about Brock Purdy at points, but I've seen what it looks like when Kyle Shanahan is scared of his quarterback. It yeah. don't look like this. That's true. We saw it with Jimmy. When he is scared of his quarterback, baby, he is scared. Now, maybe they was behind by too many points for him to succumb to the fears and then go a whole half without running the ball. But I also feel like this game, I ain't talking about that this, much, this that much, this game is kind of a celebration of diversity. Yeah. I want you to think about this, right? Mm -hmm. Brock Purdy, he's kind of the mobile quarterback, mm -hmm. right? Like, like, you don't think about him in those terms, but that's what he's giving you. They got the white dude that's the best running back in the NFL. And let's be honest, man, 
I'm trying to think of the other white dude playing running back. And I and I mean running back. I don't mean one of them like them dudes where they chant his name every time he get the ball because he only get it two, three times, right? I mean, actually, in fact, they they got the they got that guy, the you yeah, check dude. Yeah, that's him. And then they got him. Okay. Uh what you call it? George Kittle. Yeah. It's a lot of speed in that, in that, in that white man. Yeah. Look, Iowa, Iowa, the DEI program. We yep. don't talked about that, right? <laughs> we don't seen that. I, I don't know if they, that other McCaffrey, I guess he wasn't a good enough wide receiver, but they'd have had yeah. him out there, right? They would have. Then you look over there on defense and you don't think about it as much. Damn, uh, Nick Bosa. Bosa. Yeah. That, that is a black man. That is, I mean, <laughs> yeah. there's, you got Hutchinson, you got Hendrickson, you got Max Crosby, like these dudes yeah. are out here, but that's a black dude position. Yeah. It's a newer, newer wave. It's the style of play too. That is like, it's much like the quarterback. It's yes. like Purdy is, has a more athletic style. And then that defensive end outside linebacker pass yep. rusher is, uh, explosive athlete and it's normally not what we associate with those pass rushers and if we're talking about diversity that's one thing that goes underreported I think about the 49ers is they are filling the league it's like yes. the launching ground for a lot of black and, executives and they say and coaches I saw they said with in the Seth Wickersham article that just came out the teams are a little frustrated with the 49ers because they keep getting all these compensatory picks because they keep sending out all this diversity through the league by the way they got a really good linebacker who went to BYU now he black but but that don't change the fact nah. that's more diversity. Um, they got the Polynesian dude playing yeah, safety, but he Hufanga. hurt, right? Hufanga, yeah, he hurt. Yeah. Okay, so we got that. Now we go over to the Chiefs. We got Jordan, that quarterback. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a that's a paradigm shift. But then you get to their defense. They got them white dudes out there playing linebacker. They got a white dude player number 23. I thought he went to Iowa, too. Instead, it turned out he went to Notre, Notre Dame. And then they got Carl uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, doing the pass rushing. Yeah. yeah playing by the way i would love to see some of the team building outings for that defense because it's those two dudes and the consonants and esc's all-stars that the, the chiefs love an apostrophe in the name the chiefs love a vias uh, uh, uh and a drick they had the charcandrick they had the charvarius they got the legerius now like they it looked like my email box when them fools be trying to troll me like back when back when the accounts had 1488 at the end of them the chiefs they, they, if you if you got one of those the Chiefs are the Chiefs want to know what you might be able to do. You got an apostrophe in that thing. We're gonna lie. They almost didn't draft Chris Jones. They was like, yeah, I don't know, man. It don't sound like he, it don't sound like he got that dog in him. He got, he got that to him. <laughs> I, I like a, I like a name with some yeah. character. Man, they spell like Chris with a K. I mean, what we doing here? Well, hold on. He is from Mississippi. All right. Maybe we could maybe we could uh we could, we could let that go. Oh, but no, there's there's a lot of diversity. Complaining about the um about the 49ers That's capitalizing and like that is the rule working essentially is like we are going to in incentivize you to not be uh to not let your bias get in the way or we're going to push you so that your bias is more in the center right. because it's not as if they got a whole black staff they just like oh yeah why don't we actually give these guys a look yeah. because they are i promise you that there is no compensatory pick worth making your team worse no, no. so they are not yeah this they're clearly but let me ask you this. They got a Lebanese man hired to be the head coach for the New York they Jets. Did. That's amazing. Hold on. That's the second one. Yeah. Rich Kotite was Lebanese. Did you know oh, that? Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. Yes. I have a great story to tell you about that later. Um, however, I do have to say this. I think it's a lot of hating for the rest of the league to be mad at the 49ers. So for those of you who don't know, if um, you have somebody on your payroll that is um, not a white man and he gets a job at another place, or like a promotion, whatever it is, then the team gets compensatory picks. They're doing that to incentivize the teams to be not more diverse in their hiring. And so we figure a lot of people are hating because Kyle Shanahan out here doing good work with what he got going. They're going to be mad at Dan Campbell at some point because, you know, he got that. However, did they get a compensatory pick for Mike McDaniel? Because if they did, I would file an appeal. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would, I would, I would be like, hey, 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 oh, man, come gosh. on now, y'all oh, know this ain't right. Y'all know this ain't right. Forty Nine is out here like, hey, deal's a deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder how, because I don't even know how this process works because it's always so obvious. I wonder if you have to like write a letter to the league or say, well, this one, this yeah, one right here, yeah. and I, I. I imagine that they tried. How about this? And how dare you deny it? Hold up, before you get a job with the 49ers, they make you do 23 and me. <laughs> right, let me see. What can we find? Right, right. What can we find? Where that blood at? Like, hey, hey, hey. You may be surprised to find this out, but that guy right there. Uh, 
3.2% Mexican. <laughs> yeah, they're going to push him out there at the press conference Un, and teach un, him some Spanish. How you, how you say drop in Spanish? <laughs> Uda dropper. Uda dropper. Uda dropper. One drop. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love the idea of them. You know they did that thing where they you can put the flag on, yes. your, on your lapel yes. or whatever for the games or a stick on your helmet. They are definitely scouring all their coaching staff and giving them flags. Like, what is, I don't even know what this is. They, oh, Senegal. Yeah, put it they, on. They gonna put be, it on. They're going to be keep, giving people flags that don't match. <laughs> hey, look, man. If Mike Tirico had people out oh, here thinking God. he was Italian for all this time, <laughs> no, I'm just no. saying. You, Mike Tirico, if, if Mike Tirico, if Mike Tirico can be from Italy, I don't really see why it is that hell Kyle Shanahan. I don't see why he can't be from Togo. <laughs> they did not. The thing is, Mike Tirico did not have people believe in that. Mike Tirico was te- telling people that no one believed it. I think he got some people to believe. No, it. he. Well, I think. Let me tell you something, man. You say something with enough conviction. You say something over and over with enough conviction and really act like you believe it. At some point, people are going to be like, damn, I guess so. Like <laughs> the people who don't know him, we never yeah. believed it. Yeah. I told you. Yeah, that's fair. I think I've told this story before on the show, but I have to tell it again. I told you over Christmas, I was hanging out with a friend of mine. And we was watching the game and Mike Tirico came up and I looked at her. I ain't seen her in like a decade. And I looked at her and I was like, yo, that dude right there. He say he Italian. <laughs> and I lie to you not. She looked at me and went just like this. She from Baltimore too. Oh. She looked at me and went just like this. That motherfucker <laughs> on the left. <laughs> He's with us now. Mike has she, accepted it. She could not. Like, huh? the, uh, man, like ex- explain it. It's like how when you try to explain yeah. that college athletes don't get paid to people who don't yeah. watch college sports and it doesn't make sense. That's what it's like with the stallion. In, de- in defense of the stallion, he used to say that. <laughs> he, he now firmly embraces his black he embraces changing the subject <laughs> he, he, <laughs> no he said there was like an article where he said I, he said he was biracial and he didn't want to talk about it no more oh i thought he said i know i'm black oh i don't maybe, know that. maybe not i think let me tell you this if he did say that i'm I want to find out when he, I want to find out when he found out. Maybe I just. Maybe. Why will this never stop being hilarious? <laughs> Leave that man alone, We've been man. talking about this Leave topic on alone. this. Like we've been talking oh, about this topic God. on this show for like yes. three years, yeah. and not once has it stopped. Oh. You know why? Not once has it stopped being funny because every time it comes up, there's always somebody, a new person, yeah. who finds it out. Like I cease to say that I talk about race, and I keep going. I always make the point that changing one person's mind is a win. There's always a win with the stallion. There's always one new person. And by the way, I wonder, I had to give the image of that st- to the stallion that time. I don't know what the stallion would have done if it wasn't the stage. Because I'm sure I got the feeling from what I gave him that Emmy. Somebody told him I've been out here talking oh, about him. Yeah. And I, I have to say, though, if he had a problem with me being out here talking about him, I got news for you, partner. Everybody else doing it, too. I'm just doing it where you can hear it. And I'm funnier than them. <laughs> That's all that comes down oh, to. Oh, man. Have you seen American Fiction? I have not seen it yet. Okay, it's, it'll be good. You'll like it when you see it. Um, it's a good movie. It's not exactly about this, but uh, uh, what's his name? Jeffrey Wright. If the Stallion ever had a movie, I feel like Jeffrey Wright would play the Stallion because he look a lot. Yeah, I mean, he I gotta, can see that. I, oh, he he's he, he could get there. Yeah, he could get there for sure. And Jeffrey Wright's hilarious. I would love to see that made for TV movie. So let me tell you something funny in line with that. Got me calling him the Stallion. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let me tell you something in line with that. So. I was on the plane and a buddy of mine suggested that I read this book called Erasure. And Erasure Mm -hmm. is the source for American Mm -hmm. fiction. Um, I am not finished with Erasure, but I have to tell you, from and I have not seen American fiction, they do not seem to have very much to do with each other with 100 pages left in this book. But part of it is halfway through, it's basically like a parody novel. And it's written in Negroid gibberish. Right. And so I'm reading that and somebody in the seat next to me and I notice they look it over at what I'm reading. And 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 the pages that I read, man, they look mad slave, dog. Yeah. They, they they look real slave. Yeah. I had to stop and explain, yeah. hey, so this yeah. book is the source for American fiction and this portion of it is merely a parody. I like I've i i I don't know if I was being judged, but I felt terribly judged at that moment. Like, what you be like? What like it was yeah. written in such a way to be like, if you read, why are you reading? Yeah, right? yeah. Like, like, why are you reading this? That, that um that plane situation is something that we've all I think had to deal with with watching movies on the plane because if you watch a movie on a plane 
you don't realize how uncomfortable some parts of the movie are till you start getting uncomfortable with that part is on. Like there's a sex scene in a movie on the plane and you watch on your iPad. I feel so embarrassed and I feel like you probably felt the same way. Like I'm not a perv. It's just, it's just, a, it's just the page. It's just this page. But yeah, after seeing the movie, I know exactly what you're talking about. I haven't read the book, but I know the parts of the movie where they are kind of making a joke out of the like anti-intellectual, I guess, yes. novels that are very much written to the co lowest common denominator as caricatures yes. of, like... Yes, and it looked like I was people. reading one and, of them. Yeah, and you're, like, reading a page that is devoted to that. And it's like, oh, this man sitting next to me is reading a book that's written by Mammy, apparently. Yes, <laughs> like, it's written in such a way that, yeah. like, I can't believe you are reading this and you own a Kindle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you are invested enough in reading books that you got a tool to make it easier. And uh, this is what you out here reading? I love the movie. I think you'll like it too. If That's Cord Cord did that, right? Yeah, Cord did it. Yeah. He's he's trustworthy. That's his first attempt at it. Uh, it's pretty impressive. You'll yeah, like I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it a look when I when I when I when I get the chance right it. I'm gonna finish the book and then I'm gonna go do that. Uh should we give him picks or something? Sure, why not? I think the Chiefs will win. Yeah. I think that's what it comes down to for me also is I'm going to go with Patrick Mahomes. I'm just not, I'm just not yeah. putting my money against that. I tried that in the AFC Championship game, and it was a horrible decision. It was, yeah. I thought that they couldn't win that game. Uh, it, yeah. And I think that it, it, what it comes down to is what I said earlier, is I think that if the game is close at the end, I trust the Chiefs and their experience and their quarterback more than I trust uh, the other side. And I do think that the only way the game is not close is is if the Chiefs turn the ball over, which it's not going to be a, a Patrick interception or a Patrick sack fumble. Right. It's going to have to be a Pacheco fumble or a Rasheed Rice fumble or something like that. So if they manage to not turn the ball over, it'll be a one-score game in the fourth quarter, and Patrick Mahomes is who I'll pick. All right. I'm going to say this last thing before we get out of here. I want to send a shout-out to all the Detroit Lions fans, and I'm oh. talking about the ones that are here. Because your I see, people. I see all that. That's my people, man. I need to highlight them. We all need to get together. We need to have a brunch or something because, like, I see was, you know, they bought the tickets. I don't blame them, right? Because, again, worst come to worst, you get a weekend in Vegas, right? And so they deep here. And I bring this up, like, not to antagonize the Lions fans, right? I bring it up because it reminds me, um, I went to that Super Bowl in Atlanta, and them Saints fans were so sure they was going to go. And then, you know, it was that situation where it was a horrible call, and they did not call pass interference, and the Saints ultimately did not make it to the Super Bowl. And... All of that is to say, I did not bring that up to antagonize the Lions fans. I brought that up to antagonize the Saints fans. Do you remember that time? Like, put this camera square right here on me. Do y'all remember that time that y'all thought that y'all was really going to go to the Super Bowl? Y'all had it rolling. Y'all was all the way down there. And then they made a bad call. And you kept arguing about, oh, no, the call wasn't bad. They changed the rules because the call was so bad. And you would think that I would try to argue it was a bad call. It was a good call. No, it was a terrible call. And that was the best part. You deserved to win. And you lost. You lost, and they all went to the Super Bowl, and they was wearing Saints gear, and I just couldn't understand why. Why you want to walk around looking like a loser, right? Like, like well, I was like, I put on my loser suit, and I came to the stadium. The Lions, they look like upstarts. They look like they going somewhere. They look like they visualizing the future. Y'all was just losers, a bunch of sorry losers, and you lost. <sighs> you know where the Super Bowl is next year? It's in New Orleans. <laughs> I need to be careful because I love New Orleans, but New Orleans is way too dangerous for me to be popping this kind of shit. <laughs> That's like, what I was saying. Like, honestly, though, I feel like the people in New Orleans that I need to worry about yeah. ain't listening to no podcast. But at the same time, I told you this, I need to put it in more appropriate terms for this medium. I ain't met a sucker from New Orleans yet. Nope. Not one. Still no looking. matter who it is from New Orleans, I don't care how nice they are. I don't care what you think. That dude will kill you. <laughs> I love New Orleans. I can't wait. I, the way I put it about New Orleans, people are looking at New Orleans one of two ways. It would be awesome if it wasn't so awful, or it would be awful if it wasn't so awesome. I am squarely in camp number two. It is awesome. I'm yeah. ready to go for that one for the I, Super I'm Bowl. I'm looking forward to it. And Weezy said he's going to do the halftime show. I mean, I'm... I didn't know that he had the authority to make these nah, decisions. Nah, I think he said he wanted to perform at the Super Bowl. I mean, look, Jay Z, Jay Z, come up with that, right? Yeah. So maybe Jay Z could yeah. put him in, and don't strike me as a one as a one man decision. I would guess it doesn't. Weezy got enough hits. I was about to say, yeah, like, it's not it, unreasonable. You can't make the art. Like, there's not a real solid argument against it. And quite honestly, the white acts that would fit the bill 
we're kind of dying, right? Yeah. Like, I do feel like... But we're at the age. We, you tell me about... You've told me this a bunch of times is that right now is, like, we are the centerpiece of the decision makers. It should be and, our guys, right? Yeah, like, and Weezy is definitely our guy. Weezy, yeah, Weezy could get it, but, like, I'm thinking about, like, big white, like, Super Bowl-level white acts, for lack of a better term, yeah. that could do it. Like, you could make it work with, like, a Guns N' Roses halftime. I'd watch that. A Metallica one couldn't really do that. But, like, Guns N' Roses got a 15 million selling record. Like... No, I'm not saying that you couldn't make it yeah. work. I'm saying that... It, they don't seem like a Super Bowl act at this point. Oh, let me tell you. They say it's yeah. going to be a Guns N' Roses halftime. It'll be a big deal. Like, I think a Foo Fighters halftime, they can make that work. Have they already done the Green Day one? Um, that ain't where they've been going. I know, but I'm just, I guess I forgot Jay-Z in charge Yeah, now. That, But those last... could work. But that's the thing. Those could work. It's going to be a point yeah. where they going to march and be like, yo, we losing the Super Bowl, bro. <laughs> Give it back. No, they not. Because the same way we talked about the Taylor Swift audience bringing it in, the people who are going to show up for a Guns N' Roses Super Bowl, they're going to be watching the Super Bowl anyway. Fair. The NFL don't care enough about Fair. that. They tried to get Fair. some other people that Fair. may not, that can get excited about this. I look here, I want, I want the Guns N' Roses Super Bowl just so we can have all these black people on the internet going, oh, damn, I, I do like that song. I see Rashid Wallace sing Paradise City at a, at, a, at a timeout in the NBA game. I'm just telling you now. They I come see. out there, they do Welcome to the Jungle, Paradise oh. City, uh, Sweet Child of Mine, and throw one more out there, we'll all be jamming. I saw those, you know, the videos online where younger black people are exposed yes. to, like, I saw them do Black Betty, which is was a black song originally that was um, covered, but people was going off, man. That thing go hard. I don't even know what that song is about. It seemed like it's Say. probably about something sad. Say. Well, another thing happened, like, when Fantasia did the, uh, the, the Tina Turner tribute. So many people don't realize that's not originally their song it yeah. was very very clear to me like i was like oh you guys don't know this is no the boys is white white yeah <laughs> <laughs> like, like they they extra white they came up with that one yeah yeah i didn't realize black betty was a um a black song originally that was covered but black betty do go hard yeah right? hey man that's it we we give props where props is due but somebody always got to be the first one to dip toe in and be the one that's willing to say it I'm also tell you this too. It ain't happened yet. That Garth Brooks halftime is coming. Just you watch. Just letting everybody get. I didn't realize this though. I saw the internet the other day. That man got nine diamonds. Damn. Nine. Oh yeah. That's, nine. that's more than enough. Nine. It's coming. They don't care whether y'all trip the channel or not. <laughs> yeah. Nine. And they like every white person in America will watch this. Yeah, take your black ass to Popeyes. <laughs> we'll be over here jamming. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, yeah. But what they gonna do is they gonna do like melodies where they put contemporary artists mixed in. Like they're not just gonna let Garth Brooks out there with a guitar. Oh, Nelly coming. Yeah, Nelly got, or is it gonna be the Tim McGraw so they could bring Nelly out there? They go, they gonna roll out some other people. They would wouldn't dare just go for an all country Super Bowl. We would get an all hip hop Super Bowl before we get all. We already got the all hip hop Super Bowl. The Dre Super Bowl That's was very funny. They did not make Flea come out there or nobody they else. Didn't have, they didn't have to solve it up. Hip hop culture is like the centerpiece at this point. Country, although it's very popular, they would they wouldn't dare do a whole country Super Bowl. They're going to have somebody rapping at the beginning and the end of that thing. I guarantee it. This is what I want them to do. Do the country halftime and then bring out Lil Nas X. <laughs> that is Dominique oh. Fosworth. Check him out on the Dominique Fosworth Show, available where you get all kinds of fine podcasts like this one. My man, I appreciate you. I appreciate you, man. All right, now, Sean, you got prize picks for the people. I sure do, and people saying, where is this audio coming from? They call this a god mic. It's ironic. I sound like I'm in hell right now. But oh. here are my prize picks parlays. Patrick Mahomes, 0.5 pass yards. Thank you to prize picks for that bonus. I'll take more. Isaiah Pacheco, 67.5 rush yards. I'll take more. Brock Purdy, 12.5 rush yards. I'll take more. And Christian McCaffrey, 1.5 rush or reception touchdowns. I'll take more there. Hey, prize picks got to be mad they didn't run that gimmick. Um, for the first Jets game. Oh. <laughs> yeah. They, they'd have won. Yeah, they would have. They'd have got all their stuff. I'll take that free money. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us here on The Right Time, a Wave Sports and Entertainment original presented by Prize Picks. That's Sean, you handling everything behind the scenes. Thank you, sir. Oh, we need to give the people uh, something they can call in and talk about. How about your best The Game cheating story from video games? Telephone number is 323-596-7767. Does that sound right, Sean? Correct. Woo! Nailed it. I was shook. Thank you for watching us on YouTube. Subscribe, like, 
Rate us, review us, give us five stars. You only give us four stars. I'm inclined to believe you are a hater. We'll talk to you guys in a couple of days. Take it easy. Take it easy. 